Good evening guys and welcome to usmlvideos.net. Tonight I want to talk a few minutes about amiodarone, one of the very important drugs for USMLE examination. First let us uh, talk about its classification. There are four classes of antiarrhythmic drugs, class 1, class 2, class 3 and class 4. Class 1 is sodium channel blockers, whereas class 2 are beta blockers, class 3 are potassium channel blockers, class 4 are calcium channel blockers. Amiodarone comes in class 3, that is potassium blockade. However, it has wide range of actions. In fact, it shares its uh, actions uh, along with the other three classes of antiarrhythmics. So, amiodarone has a very special role. Its mechanism of action is it blocks potassium channel in cardiac muscle and it also enhances the inward current of sodium channel. Thereby, it prolongs the action potential. In other words, it is uh, actually making the cardiac muscle tolerant or resistant to these arrhythmias by prolonging the action potential. So basically that is the action of amiodarone. Amiodarone was approved for both oral and intravenous administration. It is highly effective both supraventricular and ventricular arrhythmias. First, let us uh, talk about cardiac effects. As I mentioned earlier, it prolongs the action potential duration by blockade of potassium channels. Now, it is uh, a class 3 agent as I said earlier. It also blocks inactivated sodium channels and it prolongs the action potential as a result of these effects. Some of the extra cardiac effects amiodarone causes are peripheral vasodilation. And uh, peripheral vasodilation, it gives, uh, it reduces blood pressure in some cases. Now, let us talk about uh, toxicity. First of all, let us uh, divide the toxic effects, cardiac toxic effects and non-cardiac toxic effects. First, cardiac toxic effects. Amiodarone causes symptomatic uh, bradycardia and heart block, especially in patients uh, who have sinus or uh, AV nodal disease. Coming to extracardiac side effects, it accumulates in tissues, in tissues like heart, lung, liver, and skin. It, is, uh, it accumulates over the time and causes its side effects. Its accumulation in the lungs causes pulmonary toxicity. That is a very, very important point. Amiodarone causes fatal pulmonary fibrosis. You must remember this point. Now, it, it also has, uh, it, it also accumulates in the liver. So, it might cause abnormal liver tests and it also causes hepatitis because of that accumulation. It also accumulates in the skin and results in photodermatitis and gray-blue skin discoloration in sun-exposed malar regions. And it also accumulates in the eye. So, it makes corneal micro deposits in the eye. So, the peripheral vision decreases and patient seals, uh, uh, they see some halos around the eyes because of the accumulation of amiodarone in uh, the cornea. And finally, let me give you a very, very important point. Amiodarone blocks peripheral conversion of thyrotoxin, that is T4, thyroxine, to triidothyronin T3. So, amiodarone blocks the peripheral conversion of T4 to T3. So, it is, uh, it may result in hypothyroidism or hyperthyroidism. So, there is uh, amiodarone induced hypothyroidism and also amiodarone induced hyperthyroidism. So, it could cause both. That is why before you start a patient 
on amiodarone, you should always check thyroid function studies. Now, let us uh, deal a few minutes about the pharmacokinetics. It's uh, uh, elimination half-life is complex with a rapid component of uh, 3 to 10 days. A total daily dose, uh, loading dose of 10 grams is usually achieved with uh, 0.8 to 1.2 grams doses. And the maintenance dose is 200 to 400 milligrams. And when you give intravenous loading, what do you see on the EKG? You might see QT prolongation. As I said earlier, this amiodarone, it blocks potassium channels and it prolongs action potential. That is the reason the QT interval is prolonged when we use amiodarone. Amiodarone, it's, uh, it is metabolized to cytochrome metabolizing enzyme, CYP3A4. That's why drugs that inhibit these enzymes, like uh, simetidine, they increase the concentration of amiodarone in the blood. On the other hand, whatever drug that stimulates or enhances the action of this CYP enzyme, it reduces the level of amiodarone in the blood. For example, take rifampin. What does rifampin do? It stimulates the liver enzymes. That's why when you give this amiodarone with rifampin, you can expect lower action of amiodarone because ultimately amiodarone is uh, metabolized much faster when it is uh, taken with a liver inducing drug like uh, rifampin. Now let us uh, talk about uh, therapeutic uses. Low dose of amiodarone is highly effective in controlling atrial fibrillation. As I said earlier, amiodarone has wide range of actions. That's why it is useful for both supraventricular and ventricular arrhythmias. In supraventricular atrial fibrillation, you can use a low dose amiodarone, like 200 to 400 milligrams or 100 to 200 milligrams per day. On the other hand, when in ventricular arrhythmias, like recurrent ventricular tachycardia, amiodarone is very, very useful. So for atrial fibrillation and ventricular tachycardia, amiodarone is extremely useful. Now, for recurrent or, I mean, if it is sustained ventricular tachycardia, many Physicians are using ICDs, implanted cardiovascular defibrillator. These ICDs came and reduced the use of amiodarone by itself. But these ICDs, they have uncomfortable discharges. They have uncomfortable electric discharges. That's why even with the ICD, we can still give amiodarone because amiodarone reduces those uncomfortable electrical discharges from ICDs. So briefly, amiodarone is very, very useful class 3 antiarrhythmic, which controls atrial fibrillation and ventricular tachycardia. I hope you remember these points and uh, as always, visit our website at www.usmlevideos.net that is www.usmlevideos.net and you can also subscribe to our USMLE video of the day in which you can receive a new video in your, in your mailbox and thank you, have a good night.